Now for some games that I have been playing lately. And lately I have been playing Disney Speedstorm. It's a brand new racing game from Disney Pixar with the characters from Disney and Pixar movies in a racing game. And let me tell you, it is already in my first impression of the game. It is a competitor to Mario Kart. I bought the Founders Edition on PS5. Right now you can purchase the game, but from what I gathered, it is going to be free to play later on. Thank you, Jeff, by the way. You know who you are. And my first impressions are great in this game. The graphics are so good, so good. And there's practically no load times in this game. Super fast on the PS5. Now when this becomes free to play, I hope you at least check it out. If you cannot wait for it to be free to play, get the Founders Edition. It was like $30 I think. It wasn't too bad. The actual game structure reminds me of how Overwatch is. You have a collections screen and you can see all of the movies that you can collect characters and cosmetics from. And there are loot boxes. The game has uh, several modes. You have the online and offline multiplayer parts and I have been playing a tiny bit into the online ranked. Uh, I'm doing okay I guess. There is actually also a single player campaign sort of thing that is chapter based. So I'm working my way through that. So that is good. I always like when games are supposed to be you know very multiplayer but they have a single player campaign so that I feel like I'm actually doing something. Now the game is good. I can't find anything with this new racing game that I'm like, wow, this is... Except for the microtransaction part. I'm not really a big fan of microtransactions being available in a game and it's being targeted and marketed towards children a lot and... I think it's sort of shady. Parents needs to watch out and maybe lock the PlayStation account from making purchases that they were not allowed to make. It is coming out on the Switch also. I thought I would just say that it's a good game. Performs good, looks good. I played it for so many hours yesterday. Talked on the phone while I was playing. Check it out. And now a little word from our sponsor. G2A.com is a marketplace where you can purchase games, DLCs, softwares, and gift cards. And if you click on my link down below, the landing page is gonna have a deal of today every day. You can also read a bunch of articles about console gaming and facts and guides. Now this is a website with tons of discounts on games on PlayStation, Nintendo, Xbox, you name it. If you are looking for a game, just to type it in and find some cheap redeemable codes. I mean, you just filter the codes by your region, the game that you want to purchase, and you can check out with a tons of options, uh, including PayPal, which I did. And what I like is that you get the redeemable code of your game or DLC immediately. There's even like a button that makes you activate it immediately to Steam. <laughs> I did that. I found Alan Wake for like $3, I think, and immediately activated it on Steam. So G2A.com, this is a legit website. I want you to click on my link down below just to see the discounts. Just make sure that you hit the correct region for your code. So thank you so much G2A.com for sponsoring this video. Now over to another game that I have recently played. I guess I've been playing a game recently that I have played before, but I'm going back to it now because it has been remastered. I'm talking about Alan Wake. It was originally an Xbox 360 exclusive game from what I know. Uh, I bought this game on sale because I remember playing it on my Xbox uh, One. <laughs> So Alan Wake is originally a game from 2010 and it was impressive for its time on the Xbox 360. Now, this year I think it was, or last year, it was recently anyways, remastered and it's also on the Switch. So I have been picking it back up. It is out on all systems, but I'm playing it on the PS5. <laughs> So back in the day when I first played it, I remember thinking that this is impressive and I am very hooked into the story, but I never really finished it back then and now I'm on the mission to actually finish this story. It's been in my the back of my mind sort of backlog for such a long time and now that there is a remaster I have no excuses anymore. And I feel like this is worth mentioning because it is a 
type of mystery thriller game. It's a genre I don't often delve into. I'm very picky with this genre at least. And it may look like a horror game at first. But there are no jump scares in this one. It's not that type of horror game. The jump scary one that I, you know, I don't like to be scared. <laughs> Uh, some people do enjoy that actually, but I don't. This is more like a mystery story with this character, Alan Wake, who is an author. He's traveling to some place with his girlfriend to write a new book, sort of. He has a writer's block, but anyways, he is suddenly wiped of one week of his own memory and he is picking up manuscripts uh, from a book that he hasn't written yet. And it is just a way of storytelling that I find intriguing and I remember I thought so also back in the day when I first played it. And this guy is slightly going insane. So it can actually be sort of compared to what you went through in Eternal Darkness on the GameCube. I am getting that theme and vibe from this game as that game, Eternal Darkness. And with the gameplay, it actually reminds me a bit of a Luigi's Mansion game. You are using your flashlight a lot and you get access to a variety of guns. But the thing is, these shadow monsters, like the enemies in the game, you have to weaken them first with your flashlight and then they are are vulnerable to be shot. So gameplay wise you play several chapters that are linear with each map having collectibles like thermos bottles and manuscript pages to find and your flashlight constantly needs batteries. They are the worst batteries in the world. They last for 20 seconds and you gotta pop in a new fresh battery. But in a sense that is uh, making the game having a bit of strategy involved. You know, you have to use your flashlight sort of sparingly in some sections. But here is the thing. This game is satisfying. The guns in this game, they sound and they feel awesome. And I thought I would mention this as uh, I have been playing it lately. And it is a, a game that is just special. I know a lot of my subscribers, especially one of you, you know who you are. Some of you are huge fans of this game already. But for the people that haven't heard about it, <laughs> Now I'm mentioning it. I feel like it is worth mentioning, even though it is such an old game. But I'm just happy that they remastered it so that it's more available for new people to jump into. And it has English voice acting, which I am all about. The story is incredibly captivating. The story is actually what keeps me going in this game. And you get the story sort of pieced more and more together the more you play. I thought I would mention it and I think you should add that to your wish list. It was recently on sale and uh, it is also out on Switch. I don't know how it performs on the Switch, but I'm playing it on the PlayStation 5. Performs super duper super good. So yeah, mystery thriller game going on and I'm just in the mood for that right now. You were staying in a cabin on the island, on Cauldron Lake. There's no island on Cauldron Lake. Not since the big eruption in the 70s. I wanted to tell her what had happened last night, but I couldn't. She'd lock me up. Well, since this is played lately, I guess I could also say that I am playing Atelier Rise of Steel. And, you know, I jumped ship, I played on the Switch and then I played on the PS5. And now I, I'm jumping back to the Switch and it's a whole thing. I'm ending up actually playing Atelier Rise of three, two times, both on the PlayStation and on the Switch because I'm so undecided in where I wanna do it. I just like the handheldness that the Switch provides and I enjoy the PlayStation for its power. And uh, actually, PlayStation just needs to bring out a new sequel to the PS Vita. Can we please have that already? And don't say Steam Deck, because I don't, I'm not getting a Steam Deck. Uh, it's not available. That's one thing. It's not shipping to Norway. That's another thing. The Steam Deck that I have actually held in my hands is... I think the buttons are far too up. Too up. A tiny bit too much up there. Tiny Hat says that uh, you get used to it, but... But then again, I'm not actually sure if you can cloud play your PlayStation 5 on the dock. Steam Deck, I mean. <laughs> on the Steam Deck, I mean. Like, legally or anything because I heard you had to do a lot of things for that to happen. I don't know, I'm not into that. I don't wanna, you know, do a bunch of stuff. I want it to be a, an actual official thing that you can do. Anyways, I'm ranting now. <laughs> Please follow my Instagram. Uh, I am posting stuff there and it's funny. I don't know, it's fun. Follow my Instagram, link down below. And I wanna hear what you think about Alan Wake and the new Disney Speedstorm game and let me know what you are playing lately and 
I will see you later. Lol.